Today we're taking a look at the Sony FX30 in RAW mode with the Atomos Ninja V and trying to see if using a speed booster will actually make a difference in the image quality as in the RAW mode there is an additional crop in the 4.7K video. So by using a speed booster, you then bring your field of view back to Super 35, which is what this camera is. So we wanna see, is there an image quality difference, especially when filming wide open? And is it worth it? Because if it is, that may unlock a lot of capabilities of this camera. So let's take a look at the footage. After seeing the footage, I am really impressed with the Metabone Speed Booster Ultra. Now, I have used these on Micro Four Thirds cameras for years, and then once I moved to the Red Komodo, I really stopped using these Metabone Speed Boosters just because I didn't see the point on getting them on Super 35 cameras. But on Micro Four Thirds, we were kind of dealing with the same crop that you're using on the Sony FX30. So I picked this Metabone Speed Booster up a year ago or so, and this is the Metabone Speed Booster Ultra, which you can see right here. Now, the Ultra is pretty much the latest optics that Metabones has made for the Speed Booster, although this version specifically is, you know, quite a few years old. But there are EF to E-mount locking versions. There are just some newer versions that have a little bit more tech for filmmakers. However, I'm fine with the non-locking classic version of the speed booster. Now when you look at the footage, wide open at f1.8 on the original speed boosters, as good as they were, when you would shoot f1.8, f1.4, f1.2, typically those super wide open apertures, you'd get a little bit of a loss in the image quality. However, looking at this footage, comparing to using the speed booster to Sigma's MC11 adapter, there really isn't a difference in the image quality we're getting an extra stop of light from using the speed booster, and we still get autofocus, although the autofocus is definitely not as good on the speed booster as it is on the MC11 adapter. However, we're getting that wider field of view, which is definitely helpful in RAW. So one of the things I've taken away from doing this comparison test using the speed booster is if you're filming with Super 35 lenses and the FX30, and you're not using the Sony native E-mount lenses, you're using lenses like I am, like Sigma's 18 to 35, Sigma's 50 to 100, like we used in this video, you're actually going to be able to use the entire lens, if it's Super 35, and be able to film in raw video. Now, if you're filming with full frame lenses, you're obviously still not gonna be able to get the full frame field of view. It would be interesting if there was ever a 0.64 speed booster, because this is technically a 0.71. The 0.64 speed booster would give you an even wider field of view, but I get they never made one for the Sony E-mount because there aren't any Sony cameras that have a smaller sensor than APS-C Super 35. But if they made one, we'd get a wider field of view, but that's a niche product, neither here nor there. I have really been impressed with this and I'm definitely gonna start using this more when I'm filming in the raw mode on the FX30 because you just have so much more flexibility in post, especially being able to switch the color science and do all that without using plugins within DaVinci, although of course you have to transcode the ProRes RAW footage in order to use it in DaVinci. The CDNG files are just absolutely fantastic. So I can't recommend it enough. After seeing a lot of this content lately that a lot of content creators are doing on the movie The Creator because they use the Sony FX3 and the Atomos Ninja V just like we're using in this video, although we're using the FX30. They did the transcoding in Assimilate just like I'm doing in this video, transcoding to a CDNG format. 
a da Vinci handles it really well and I really enjoy the image quality out of this raw video format. So I'm going to start using it a lot more now. What's interesting though is if you're using an FX3, you can obviously get the non-cropped raw video mode and use Sony E-mount lenses and there's really no benefit to using a speed booster on that camera. But with the FX30, because of the crop, of course there is a benefit of using the speed booster, plus you get the extra stop of light. And then just for reference, in this video, when I'm comparing F1.8 on the speed booster to F1.8 on the MC11 adapter, that is the speed boosted F1.8 versus the regular F1.8, meaning that it is technically, at this point using the speed booster, 1.2 of light, but it's not really an F1.2 as far as the depth of field you're going to get in the FX30. So that's why I compared it F1.8 to 1.8 because you're looking at the same depth of field you would get on both cameras. You just obviously are getting a little bit more light using the speed booster. So I can't wait to do more content on this combo because it works really well. I can't believe I got such a deal on this a year ago. And I'm sure if you look on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, you can find them as well. So if you have any questions, any ideas for content you want to see with this combo, make sure to ask in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name is Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next video.